Our white cakes have baked. I tested them with a uh, wooden skewer, few moist crumbs clinging so they're not overbaked, and they have cooled on a rack. And here they are. And you can see because we used um, a really good quality pan, they're even across the top, they're not peaked, there's no cracks. And so now we need to unmold them and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna frost them and fill them. So one thing that you need, um, when I decorate cakes, whether I'm doing a wedding cake for 100 or whether I'm making a birthday cake for six people in my home, um, turntable, really helpful to making a professional looking uh, cake. Cardboard rounds, these can be purchased in craft stores. You want the same size diameter as your pan. So I've got eight inch pans, I've got eight inch cardboard round, and you'll see how they come into play. And then an assortment of icing spatulas. Now, this is a rubber spatula, which um, I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, metal spatulas like pancake turners, that's another kind of spatula. And then these things, which also come in like little pointed uh, versions, um, these are icing spatulas. And they're specifically for applying icing and frosting to cakes, and they really help get the job done. So what I'm gonna do is, first thing is I'm going to go around the side of the cake to help unmold it. Now when you do that, you could use a butter knife, but I'm gonna use the icing spatula. You want to press towards the outside of the pan because if you're pressing in towards the cake, you might shave off pieces of the, the, the cake sides and you don't wanna do that. So like that. Now our cardboard round goes on top and then the cake is gonna unmold. Look at that, perfect. And because we lined the bottom of the cake pan with parchment paper, it's exactly the way we want it. This cake is going to have a raspberry jam filling and it's gonna have a vanilla buttercream on the outside and then beautiful fresh raspberries on top. It's a great birthday cake. So here we have one of our white tiers white layers, excuse me. It's gonna be a two-tiered cake. And I'm gonna use about a third of a cup of seedless uh, raspberry jam. And you can measure it, or really what you're trying to do is you can go by eye. You want a nice, even layer, but don't go all the way to the edge. We don't want the raspberry jam bleeding to the outside, because we want the outside of the cake, once it's frosted, to be white and pristine and gorgeous. And one of the ways that we accomplish that is not to take the filling all the way to the edge. And if this were measured out, it would be about a third of a cup. There we go. Now I'm going to unmold our second layer. I'm going to use another cardboard round to help me. Don't forget to peel off the parchment. Don't want the paper in the middle there. And then I'm just going to take this and put it right on top. And we have, this is now an eight inch tier and we're going to apply our buttercream. Frosting the cake is going to come in two stages. First, we're going to create a crumb coat. A crumb coat is exactly like it sounds. It has to do with the crumbs. See, there's some crumbs on the outside here. We want to seal the crumbs in with the crumb coat of frosting. We chill it, then we come back for the final coat of buttercream. And this is one of the things that's going to help the cake just look really professionally done. So our buttercream is made. It is creamy smooth. This is the vanilla. And I'm just going to put a good quantity on top. And then with my icing spatula, I'm going to go back and forth. Now this is important. When you use your icing spatula, you want to glide over the buttercream. Don't go down onto the cake and back up onto the buttercream or you'll bring crumbs back up onto the buttercream. So use the spatula to push the frosting to the edges. Don't worry about this looking pretty right now. That's not what this coating is about. 
and then you're going to take extra to the sides. Now, I want you to see something really important here. You see the, um, see the cardboard round? Watch what I do. I bring my spatula down to the cardboard round, and I use it to help guide the application of the buttercream. And because the cardboard round is perfectly round, because it was commercially uh, cut, it's going to help the outside of the cake look really symmetrical. So don't try to cut um, cardboard rounds yourself. You really want to purchase the pre-cut rounds because they're going to be that perfect smooth edge. Now frosting a cake is all about applying buttercream, taking it off, applying, taking it off. Now the buttercream that's on here now um, does have some crumbs mixed in, so we don't want it to go back into this batch. So I'm just gonna take this little dish right here for any extra. And now I'm going to use the turntable and bring myself down to height to make sure that it's level. And if the cake is not quite level, you can use buttercream to build up the sides that need to be built up or taken down if they need to be taken down. You want it to be level. But don't remember, it's a crumb coat. Don't worry if you can see the cake through it. That is absolutely fine at this point. And this looks pretty good. That's all we need right now. No one's going to see it at this stage. So right at this point in time, we need to refrigerate it for at least an hour until the buttercream is firm. This is chilled for at least an hour. Look, firm to the touch, doesn't even come up on my finger. This is going to allow us to make a beautiful final coating. So once again, I'm going to go into my mixer and I'm going to take out a quantity of the frosting. And then with my icing spatula, again, just over pushing it to the sides. Now the crumb coat provides like a canvas for you. So it makes it much easier than the first time around. And then onto the sides. So here we're gonna be a little more generous, create a thicker coating. Okay, once you have pretty much the tops and the sides covered, then we can start making, we can start making decorative swirls. So this is just, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just you're using the spatula and we want to make pretty swirls. Every cake is going to be unique. That's the way it should be. I mean, a homemade good should look homemade, right? Even my wedding cakes, none of them are, you know, cookie cutter looking. And none of them are perfect. This is not about perfection. This is about you baking for a loved one, family member and just baking from the heart, and there we go. Now this isn't done yet. We're gonna put some gorgeous raspberries on top. Our cake is on a beautiful pedestal stand. You could use whatever kind of display uh, plate that you like. I happen to like pedestals. I think it adds something a little extra, especially if it's a birthday cake. Um, and I'm going to put fresh raspberries on top. So these are Driscoll's berries. Uh, I have a couple of containers here. And this is going to accentuate that raspberry jam that we put in the middle. And I'm going to arrange these on top, really just in a pile. You don't want to be too, too exacting. You want it to have somewhat of a natural look to it. Do this right before serving because you don't want the berries to bleed onto the beautiful pristine white frosting. I think that's what I want. So two containers of the berries to have on hand, and you'll have enough. And then, this is a great container. It's got an airtight plastic lid, and I keep powdered sugar in here. And 
A lot of, um, you know, you go to a restaurant, there might be a little dusting of powdered sugar on the plate. They always have something like this on hand. And if you have this on hand too, it'll be easy to accentuate. So I'm just gonna give a really light, pretty dusting on top. It's just gonna make it, and even just like a little goes down onto the plate. Look at that. This is special enough for any occasion. I've decided my birthday's today. This is my cake. So to cut, I like to use a thin slicing knife. So I'm just gonna go in, cut myself a nice wedge. Now remember, the cardboard round is on the very bottom of the cake, so it's also gonna protect whatever plate that you're using, which is kind of a nice added bonus. And then it's always helpful to have a wedge-shaped spatula like this. It's great for pies, great for cakes, especially getting that first piece out. It'll really help. Got my plate nearby. The first one is always, you know, oh, wow. Perfect, 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 perfect. Look at this. Look at that. Gorgeous. Look at that, tall, impressive, this tender white cake. We used our uh, King Arthur unbleached cake flour for the cake, vanilla and raspberry. It's all come together. There you go. Great cake, birthdays, graduations, office parties, all kinds of celebrations easy to make, an Italian meringue buttercream frosting, which you can find the recipe for at bakerpedia.com, as well as the white cake. This one, we went with the vanilla and raspberry version, but you'll find other versions as well. Happy baking.